Why is the last thought before death so important? Honestly, it's not important. <laughs> the most important thing, a uh, thing that should happen at the time of death is uh, fearlessness and uh, peace. Whatever you are thinking will be of no consequence. I have said this somewhere and um, I don't remember now but the words the, the correct word to use is the, what should be our state while dying not the thought the state should be peaceful fearless and detached state and most importantly it should be full of awareness of what is happening that is important that is possible only when you have spent your life like this and you know it is an important event and just like I, you are present fully present and ready for any important events in your life you should be fully present and ready and there is a problem with the death that uh, there is no schedule for it it does not announce its arrival and uh, so you should be always ready it can sound a little bit negative that why should why should be i always ready for death should i concentrate on my life or should i simply keep thinking about the death so this uh, um kind of misunderstanding can happen that is why i don't say these things especially to the newcomers when i say that be always ready for death i don't mean that you keep thinking about it i need to die next second or tomorrow or i need to prepare for it you need to be aware and detached all the times and that is what will prepare you for the death it does not matter now when it comes because you are always in this state be fearless so this uh, is the state that is uh, recommended when uh, you are old enough to die there is no recommendation for young people although death can happen in, in the young age also but uh, usually even if they are uh, aware and even if they are detached the life energies are so strong in the young age that they take over so after a good life after good uh, long lesson of the life the mind is prepared by living in awareness that uh, you can have you can get a good control over the life energies as they change in the event of death now some people are not going to understand it and honestly i also don't understand it i'm simply repeating what my teacher told me what are these life energies and so on you will know this when you do the experiments of the dreaming and projected states or of the deep sleep state when you do these experiments you will see that there is a very very distinct change in the life energies while the states are switched and the whole game here is to get control of these energies usually they will put to sleep or they will put uh, you into an unaware state and habitual state automatically you should be so aware that uh, these um, forces that put us back to sleep into some kind of habitual existence you should be able to get hold of these forces the life energies and turn them into something that you want make use of your awareness make use of our your intellect and uh, turn the event of death into event of liberation now i know this cannot be done by people who are very very new who are doing the practices for the first time in their whole existence as a causal body and that is why these experiments are prescribed so that uh, you get a taste of these things if you do the experiments if you are successful you can make it your practice and uh, if there is a next birth then you will be born with these tendencies you will find a teacher and you will get you will get the intense training once you get the training then uh, the death is uh, child's play for you and these 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 things are being done by the advanced seekers so i don't claim that after listening to my videos and doing a few experiments you will become that advanced seeker but who knows it is all there now for you to try out and um, sometimes it looks like that i'm discouraging people from doing all these things and yes on the path of knowledge we don't do anything even if there is a next birth we are okay with it what is the next birth even if the death happens in odd conditions that we don't want we are okay with it why because it's a learning experience next time you be careful if you have the awareness if you have the knowledge and 
the, you could not control the event of death, not a big problem. Next time you can control it. So uh, we simply discard this all the illusory activities on the path of knowledge. So what I've done here is I've mixed the practices from other paths, especially the yogic paths. You will find this kind of mixture happening in them. even the most pure paths like Buddhism. They have adopted the practices for death and for other states, even though they, uh, that is not kind of mainstream thing. So on the path of knowledge, we are supposed to die like any ordinary person and with added qualities of attachment, sorry, and freedom from attachment, complete detachment and uh, peace. If you live a life like this, you will die like this. Your afterlife, you know, which which is a, a wrong word really, you can say after, after death experiences will be in complete detachment and peace. You will get the blessings of masters if you are aware enough and it has certain advantages. Now there will be questions like, what if I don't do it? Is there any problem? And no, that is why we don't put so much uh, weight on it, on the path of knowledge. Because your whole life was lived in knowledge. These impressions are impressed on the causal body already. Your everyday practice is good enough for the causal body. And uh, it does not matter how uh, the death has happened, except in extreme cases. If it happened naturally by old age or disease or something, then the next birth uh, has all the imprints of the previous birth. If you have lived your life intensely in the, in the awareness, it is possible that you will be born as a seeker instantly. You know, there won't be any delay, probably a few days of delay or probably less than a year of delay, depending on whether you, uh, whether a proper body is available at that time and age. And um, then you will, you will be born with qualities of a seeker already. Like I, rem I remember my case, you see, people thought that this uh, child is kind of um, unfit uh, he is not like others. That's what I got. You know, wherever I went, I got this comment. You are different. You are not like others. Sometimes I thought that they are insulting me. They are joking about me. Sometimes people were uh, um, very clear about it. That by different, I mean that you are going to do something different. You are going to do something great in your life. So um, it was kind of mixed um, comments that I got. And very quickly I came to know, yes, there is a difference. <laughs> there is a difference from other people. That means I was born with this imprint and, and I cannot explain it. Nobody can explain it because nothing extraordinary happened. There was nobody extraordinary in my family or around me, just average family. None of my siblings had all those tendencies, not even my parents. Almost everybody was ignorant with no desire to uh, know anything. So it is, it is odd that uh, the birth happened in such family, even with uh, past life practices. But uh, then later on, I came to know that it is the karmic um, machinery as usual. It, it happened. The, the, the karmic stuff is so deep and dense that uh, probably there was no control over this. But yes, it was the, all the imprints were present impressions were present and this will be your own experience for many people you are different you don't fit in the this um, factory of society where everybody is expected to be same so and this is uh, this is what is recommended on the path of knowledge keep doing your practice keep uh, your awareness on as much as you can and uh, just like the seasons happen naturally day and night happen naturally you will progress naturally there is no hurry. Everybody needs to get their karmic fruits. Even even those who are highly aware, you see, they get a choice to delay it, but you cannot destroy it. You can choose the prarab for your next life, but you cannot say that no, I want this to be gone forever. I don't want consequences. No, that is not possible according to me. You are going to anger the Maya very much if you try to mess with these things. And that's not really growth, you see. I don't want the fruits of my actions. That means you don't want to grow. You don't want to learn. Here's the next step. Okay, okay next birth in the higher species, whatever it is, you know, higher bodies, higher worlds. Yes, that is also possible. But after a million years, you will be kicked back into something lower form because that is pending. 
because of your sadhra you could delay that fruit for a million year but it's never gone so these are advanced topics and clearly beyond our experience right now what is in our experience practice that whenever you are ready for the advanced uh, you will see that a guru guru is already present to guide you so gather good impressions that is the key how will i remember this in another life this knowledge stays in the causal body yes everything stays in the causal body and it does not matter if you remember it like you remember yesterday or your last week or last year there is a good chance that you will not remember anything at all it is not a big bad thing you see the impressions they work even if they do not reach the intellect they are working right now also you are a person right now who is a sum total of all your life you can see it we have the inert matter we have the active matter we have the cells we have the dna we have the organs we have the um, animal nature the plant nature we have the human nature also and there are some hints of higher nature in us of what is coming isn't everything present already in the seen part everything is present you don't remember what happened when you were a single cell or you were a plant somewhere you were a bird or a fish or probably many of these thousands of lives nothing is remembered but you chose a body which remembers all the bodies it has the imprint of all the all the life forms nature finds a way even if you don't want even if you don't remember even if you are not progressing nature will find a way just like the all female dinosaurs they turn into males some of them through who knows how how that happens and similarly this will happen to you that uh, even if you don't remember what you are even if you don't remember all of your lives exactly that will happen which is necessary the nature finds a way to push you on on the evolutionary path if you are stuck it will find a way so there is no need to worry that i don't remember anything no that which needs to remember it remembers the dinosaur knows how to turn gender into a male remember that uh, we are nobodies there is no person it's an illusion nobody is in control really i talk about control but it's something else that has the control not the one who thinks i am in control and so uh, those things are happening perfectly already why is a yogi in such a hurry or he is kind of anxious no no i want the control i will do it myself nature is not doing it i want it now why is that and i mean it's not a bad thing you can try it it's not a bad thing and he stays there in the cave and uh, prevents all kinds of sensory um, experiences entering his mind you know locks himself up in the cave and sometimes there are some extreme practices where you know the fellow students they uh, place a big uh, rock in front of the cave there is a narrow cave and the person needs to get into the cave and a rock is placed in front of it probably there is only water there is nothing to eat also or probably dry fruits something like this and and the person goes there in the darkness of the cave and there is no light and there is no sound what happens is that uh, the senses the our physical senses are rendered useless remember that that is the only way to <laughs> um, change the state into a projected state that we forget the senses and it, this is a kind of extreme way to do that you can use a flotation tank and same thing will happen so the cave environment extreme darkness lack of sound lack of food and lack of people it puts the mind into such a state that it wanders into a projected state now for one or two days the nature is going to put you to sleep but after that something some kind of miracle happens you are not in a waking state anymore because you know the cycle has been disturbed there is no sunlight to tell you when to wake up there is no noise to tell you when when it is daytime no people the whole machinery is kind of broken i mean we force the we force mother nature to take extreme steps and the whole machinery is cut off the whole machinery is uh, um, reset of uh, waking dreaming sleeping and living and uh, sunlight 
night time moon there is no moon in the cave and uh, people no tiredness because you are not doing anything and even the digestion is on hold because not eating too much you know, just enough to stay alive everything is kind of broken and uh, this is a signal to uh, maya a mother nature that well it is as good as death this is what will happen and at the time of death the senses are cut off the body enters kind of stagnated um, state it is not um, doing any kind of metabolism the person becomes something else you will see this observe the dying person especially from old age the body also changes and they, you will see see that there is a glow on the face of that person it does not look like uh, that terrified uh, diseased thing there is a smile on his face and there is light in his eyes suddenly there is awareness this will happen to those who die naturally and have lived a very good life it won't happen to everyone if the person is kind of greedy evil violent ignorant fellow <laughs> no chance no chance he will die screaming or in complete unconsciousness back to the cave there the conditions have been made artificially as if it is a, it is the event of death and the uh, the causal body then withdraws and drifts into the subtle body and it uh, connects with uh, some other um, world which is suitable for after death experiences people will say it is a park and people will say it is a temple and people will say it is um, just um, void with the light in front of me you see it can connect to any of these virtual reality scenarios sometimes it is a airport <laughs> those who are very modern and um, some kind of transition place railway station probably and there you if you have uh, the awareness and if you have the intention there you can meet your guide this this resembles a lot like the south american journeys spiritual journey something similar is done there actually these things are the extreme practices are a part of all the cultures in the world now it is all destroyed obviously they were a part of this and uh, what is what is yogi trying to do here will enter these states get an experience you need only one experience you see or probably two and when the actual death happens you simply retrace the earlier experience with full awareness and you end up in the same park same airport same railway station same temple with your guide there ready to receive you there is no fear there is no messing around no fussing around you know exactly what is happening you have full control over the energies they don't put you to sleep and so on you see you can compare it with going to atm you went to atm for the first time you did not know what buttons to press and probably you press wrong buttons probably your transaction failed a few times but uh, once you did it next time it took you only one minute to withdraw cash from the atm isn't it one one step learning because it's so easy it's you know the atm is not a complex machine that you need to master for 20 years it's not like a musical instrument or something like this is programming the computer or no it's press the buttons the death is extremely simple it is like this disconnect from the senses the world is gone the body is gone you know we don't know what happens to it and connect to um, some familiar experience where there is somebody there to receive you probably there will be many but you know your guide is most important person there if you never practiced if you're if you're not uh, associated with any tradition and worse if you're born in a spiritual desert in a country where no guides you know nothing is there in the name of spirituality then and the death will be kind of non optimal so that is why you see all this traditions were set up so that you join an ashram you join a tradition a lineage so that you get all the masters of the lineage to help you or you stay in a very very spiritual environment where the whole country is like this <laughs> probably you know it is not it is all destroyed from this country also now so many people they prefer to die in a holy place they prefer to die in a temple why because you see they wanted uh, aware death they wanted uh, and that this death death be their last one and that was the environment here but now 
it is nothing. People want to die with all their gold and cash <laughs> and their will. Who is going to get what after I am dead? Who will run the business and all, you see. Uh, the materialism, capitalism and whatever ism has taken over. This is the age of darkness. So they die like animals and they are born again. Same environment, the same tendencies which they exhibited at the time of death. So it's unfortunate. But uh, you see, this knowledge has been left. It's a leftover knowledge. We don't do it, but uh, we know about it. And that's what we do on the path of knowledge. That we have an idea what is going on here. What is this cave practice? What is this journey? And uh, we try to find something which is even more easy, you know, easier than this. That is, we live a good life, full of awareness. Do not worry about what is death and what is what will be the experience there. Just be ready for it all the time. Be ready for death all the time. The meaning of which.